What is up, generals? We are back with Ultimate General Civil War, and this is the JNP Rebalance mod, uh, Major General Confederate playthrough. We are returning once again to the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, let me make sure we're clicking on the right save. Yep, this is good. And we're still finishing up day one because, my word, there are a lot of little steps to day one. So let's take a look at where we are. So the field has opened up. And we're still missing the 3rd Division coming out of 3rd Corps, which, um, if I'm not mistaken, is where a pretty healthy chunk of our artillery is. As I do remember, well, it's not a healthy chunk. It's it's two more batteries at least, and maybe maybe a third, because uh, I don't think Third Corps has a whole lot more than six batteries. Um, so uh, I suppose we're expecting them later, uh, and we're also expecting a significant chunk, or possibly all, of I Corps to approach out of the north. Now, given the distance they're going to have to cover, uh, it's going to be a bit before i -Corps really gets here uh, and is able to meaningfully affect the fight. Um, so I've got to figure out, at this point, what I'd like to do about the fact that the map has opened up. So uh, the only flags that... Well, no, I guess it's the same flags that have always mattered. So it's McPherson's Ridge, Seminary Ridge, Oak Ridge, and then now Cemetery Hill. Now the risk for me is if I wipe the map or uh, I take Cemetery Hill, that's it. Like we, we, win, we win, finger quotes, Gettysburg. I would very much like to get um, all three days of this battle. And if there are more, I'd like to get that too. Uh, and I say that because uh, this is just a great map. Honestly, this is a great map. It's a fun battle. Um, it's one of the bigger ones we've had thus far, and I'd like to really have a chance to kind of do the whole thing. So the, um, intent then is not to clear the field today, but rather to inflict as heavy, uh, as heavy a series of casualties as I can reasonably do, um, without clearing the map and then also um, preserve as much of the army as is reasonable. Now, comma. I know I'm saying that at the same time as Third Corps has suffered. Um, I mean, in aggregate, it's really not that bad. Like most of these bars are, are feeling pretty full. Um, but you can definitely tell that parts of this army have done some serious fighting. Uh, and, I, and I know I got a little frustrated in that last video. I was in the middle of it. Um, and I, I don't tend to like to swear a whole lot on this channel. I'm a veteran. So, you know, at one point in time in my life, you know, fuck was basically a comma. Um, but, uh, you know, there's there's a time and a place for that. And I think uh, excessive use of it is maybe not really called for. Um, the artillery is doing a great job. So the second artillery Blake battery suffered losses of 90 men, and more importantly, three cannons. They're Blakeleys, though, so I'm going to be able to replace those. That's kind of why I opened the battle with the Blakely. Um, it was a gun that is a very high performer, but one I can replace um, if need be so uh and then the whitworths and the 20 pounders are doing great now i apparently neglected to top off uh 11th ordinance but say la guerre so i think um in the moment i'm not really going to change up my strategy a whole lot i'd like to continue trying to hold uh seminary ridge and mcpherson's ridge we're going to keep on picking at reynolds troops up at uh, oak ridge and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and push 40th Louisiana, and we're also going to push the first uh, Virginia sharpshooters onto uh, Seminary Ridge. The task force here under Johnston, however, is going to remain largely in place. 18th Texas Grenadiers have been doing great work, just trying to act as a backstop and keep us sort of in the fight. Um, the 42nd Black Watch, 11th Mississippi Rifles, and the 14th Arizona Infantry, who should probably have been upgraded to the rifle designation as they have two stars, um, have also been doing just a, a truly phenomenal job. Uh, they have suffered uh, for it, um, but they've been asked to kind of hold off a, a force uh, in excess of their number by quite a margin um, and doggedly. I think they've held on. And a lot of that really does rest on the shoulders of the long rifles who have, I mean, just 
really punched well above their weight class. Again, I know that this particular unit and gun type is largely viewed as being broken um, or overpowered or what have you. Uh, and, and Johnny and Panda have done a really good job of, uh, in more recent iterations of the mod, uh, limiting the access to this firearm uh, for, for a lot of this reason. And I think historically only like like 300, I think, were ever made anyway. So I've already got more than were, <laughs> and, I've, and I've taken losses. I've already got more than were ever actually manufactured. Um, so let's take a look at what I'd like to try and accomplish as far as um, initial orders. So the first thing I want to do is whenever it's practical, I want to rotate the guards out um, of a forward position. And I say that because as much as their firearm stats pretty good. Well, that's interesting. Uh, they do have the musketry drill. Hmm. And then I gave them the rotation speed. It's interesting. I didn't give them, I was expecting that I would have given them the um, maneuver perk with the charge damage, but I guess not. Well, in that case, they can just hang out for a minute. Um, they're, I mean, they're, they're fine, right? The, they outnumber on their own. Well, not quite on their own, but they outnumber almost um, this entire attack force by themselves. Almost. Anyway, um, all right, so if I can take care of Baxter, I'm going to feel comfortable. I'd like to get the four brigades, so including 40th. I'd like to get the four brigades here on seminary facing uh, off in this direction, uh, but I'm not s super sure I'm going to be able to do that right away. So we'll get uh, one volley off on Baxter here with the 1st Virginia, uh, and then we'll try and get them somewhere on this hill here. I want to have... The Louisiana uh, Brigade and the Florida Brigade rotate to meet Kurzanowski and Schimmelfennig. They are probably going to struggle to hold this on their own. So I'm expecting I'm probably going to have to seed uh, Seminary Ridge one more time, uh, which will, I think this will be the third time that I've been pushed off that ridge. Uh, so yay. Um But we'll, uh, you know, we'll do our best to try and get it back and, and sort of bleed uh, Kurzanowski and Schimmelfennig dry. They might outnumber me quite substantially, but they're one-star troops, so we've got that going for us. Uh, at the moment, though, I need 41st Texas focus on kind of convincing Baxter that maybe North is the correct answer. If I can get them off of this portion of the map right here, um, is that in? No. Okay. So the Union can use these fences as defensive breastworks, but the Confederates for some reason can't. Probably because they're facing, you can't see me making finger quotes, probably because they're facing the wrong direction. Anyway, that's a lot of talking. Um, good preamble. Hopefully I've done a pretty good job sketching um, the situation on the battlefield out and also my attempt or my intent and worries uh, about that battlefield. I also think it might be time to move uh, 14th can probably stand in the backstop and then maybe 42nd can push up at some juncture, but we'll take a look at that when the time comes. All right. So we'll get uh, 40th Louisiana up. We'll convince Baxter that maybe it's time to get the hell out of here, get the hell out of Dodge. These units are getting just browbeaten down, which is fantastic. It's exactly what I wanted to see happen. And the rest of these cats are just going to have to sort of do their best. Um, I want to try and maximize the cover for them as best as a best as I'm able. And I really don't know if we're actually going to be able to push uh, and hold that terrain. So what I think I want to do. Let's see if we can't get the sharp shooter unit. Mm, where do I want them? There, seem, there seems pretty good. That seems like a pretty good spot for them. And then I can have the Florida Brigade um, acting as a backstop. They've really suffered pretty heavily, and I don't want them to be in any kind of frontline position for the remainder of this battle. Um, so maybe they can just work as a backstop for a little while. And there's Stones, 2nd Brigade moving up. Which is fine. Let's just get into some okay cover and we'll just kind of have to figure that out when we get there.
Let's put Johnston here and see if he can't kind of manually coordinate both fronts. Now we knocked out Captain, Biddle, sure, cool. Coordinate both fronts uh, as well. Yeah, we're taking some heavy losses with the 41st, not ideal. Are they going to make it across? What is this? Is someone shattered? I'm not seeing a flag. It looks like someone shattered. That's great. All right, so we have cover, thank goodness. Ah, but we're getting shot from across the... Yep, that's uh, understandable. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to convince Stone to give me some room to breathe. And then what I'd love to do is I'd love to get 41st... Um, maybe like here, and to join kind of the defense along this side of the ridge, and then get the 40th um, here where uh, kind of can be their turn in the barrel, uh, so to speak. And we're also doing a really good job just whittling down Union forces uh, here to the point that they may not be able to go on the offensive a whole lot more after a bit here. And it may also just be that I, I don't get to push up here until like it, I'm actually now that I'm kind of watching this all play out especially considering that they, they've got Cutler there and that defensive breastwork um, I may have to try and hold this ridge from here south and I just might not be able to take I really like this spot of terrain it's like it's a good piece of terrain but I think the game's telling me that I don't get to have it um is I'm going to have a hard time, yeah, I'm going to have a hard time holding this. So let's get there as a backstop. Baxter's pretty much not going to make it to contact, so I'm not worried about him. Biddle won't either. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm just not worried about that front anymore. Okay, 41st fall back. You're doing great on your own. Fantastic. Yeah, so we're... Uh, as long as the front remains the way that it is, I think we're actually okay on Seminary Ridge. Not that worried about it. Kurzanowski won't make contact either. Um, this is somewhat concerning, but we outnumber Stone pretty heavily, and the 40th is fairly fresh. So let's just do that. And then we'll get you in there too, just to really make sure we get rid of Stone. Interesting. You might actually make contact. You're be nice and tired when you get there, though. So there's that. Never mind. They're, they're content to just shoot it out, looks like. Alright, yep, there's that. Great. Okay. And... Oh, they are making contact. That's fine. They're also really not going to... Make it long. Baxter is wounded somewhere. Uh, there, probably. Okay. Let's not get cocky. And in fact, that's a great opportunity to swap in the 42nd. Give them a chance to rest up. Colonel Roy Stone is... Ah, sure. Yep, Stone is wounded. So they're losing officers. First division. Ah, darn it. We lost James Archer. Where did we lose Archer from? Somewhere out. Yeah, we're in a melee. Okay, that's that's uh, unfortunate. How long have we had Archer in command? Uh, Archer's been around for a bit. So hopefully uh, he recuperates. Uh, looks like Biddle Mark II is coming in for another attempt. That is unlikely to succeed. There's Smith. He's two stars. He is probably going to make contact. You're fine there. Okay. Yeah, this is actually a great place for, for Johnston. He can kind of pass his morale buff around. All right. You shoot them. But really, you move up and you fall back. And then if you can, whenever you can, shoot there, I guess. All right. So I don't know if we need the 14th Louisiana or 14th Arizona um, there anymore. Yeah, Biddle isn't going to make contact. Smith probably is, however. And it looks like Ames is coming in as well. There's not a whole lot of Stone's Brigade left. That's good to know. I mean, they are 
getting reinforcements, but they're also really getting hit pretty hard. All right, so we've got to watch this pretty tightly. Um, yeah. Okay, so I think I just need to give up on this spot of dirt that I, I, I want so badly. Smith is going to get hurt here in a second, but he's probably going to make contact. Ames is definitely going to make contact. Let's get the 14th just right there in the middle. We might be able to wipe Biddle here in a second. Yep, there you go. I mean, we're just punishing them for going on the offensive, which is great insofar as whatever that, that's worth. Uh, Ames is definitely going to make contact, so I'm going to try and break off there if I can. I think we're doing okay here, so we need to back off. Back it up, back it up, back it up. I don't think we're going to get out of there in time. It's incredible how much of this battle I feel is being fought by one one core. It's just shocking. Bye, Osborne. Great job, 7th Louisiana, considering you've got what appears to be no officers running your unit. <laughs> they're just run by NCOs at this point in time, which means they run more efficiently. Um, sorry, my bias is showing, right? Come on, keep falling back. I know, it's tiring, I understand. Oh, I think they just reached. That's okay, they're getting shot from two different sides. I guess we, ch uh, we can't. We're tired. Hmm. How's this going to go? Honestly, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Get a volley off, and then charge if you can't. 41st. Uh, actually, they're going to... They're going to make contact. Pull the trigger. It's right there. You, like, literally can't miss at this point in time. I mean, okay, sure. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Sorry this is going so slow. There's kind of a lot happening all at once. All right, now we charge. And you're safe to shoot at that. Great job. 41st, or no, 40th. These are relatively new units, and they're just doing a great job holding on. Let's see if I can't get cocky and shoot at. Uh, I don't care about Smith so much. I want to shoot Osborne if I can. Another unit seems to have shattered, maybe? That's a lot. That is a big unit to have shattered. Or are they entering these trenches? Hmm. Let's get the supply wagon further north. Okay, I think we can probably think about going back to normal speed, which is still slow from the base game's perspective. Yeah, okay, we got aims, that's good. Let's see if we can't get a little greedy there. Brigadier General Ames. We who 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 we got a brigadier. That's legit. Alright. Um, punishing volley on Kurzanowski. We are not gonna hit Osborne from there, I don't think. Oh, it's not one unit that shattered, it's two units that shattered. Okay, that's a lot more reasonable. Okay. How are we doing? Anytime, guys. Anytime. General Fiasco in command of I Corps.
All right, general fiasco of i is still on the way. Um, oh, who's the commander for third division? I don't know, just some random guy. I think I've got at least a brigadier general in every every division is uh, in command of third division. So wherever the hell that guy is, he is uh, for sure going to have uh, some uncomfortable conversations his way <laughs> when. <laughs> When we, we do our after action review here, and there's a court of inquiry. Okay, so you go there, you there. Yep, that's what I figured. Alright, if I can earmark two brigades to shoot at Cutler, plus all of my artillery, that might actually be fine. Two, three, everything goes into Cutler. 14th Arizona and 40th Louisiana all put their fire into Cutler. 7th Louisiana kind of holds everybody off for the foreseeable future. It's not pretty. It's not pretty, but I think it will work. Yeah, in the early afternoon hours of 1 July um, 1863, it does appear as if the junior leadership of the Confederate infantry was sorely tested. I would imagine in this version of history, a litany of lieutenants and majors and sergeants would be the real heroes of this battle. Most of the division commanders are wounded. So this would very much be one of those battles that uh, they taught a lot about in the NCO Academy, probably. All right, let's get 41st back. They have absolutely taken a beating. Holy crap. All right. Colonel Fowler, probably in Cutler's Brigade. Okay, putting all the fire we can on Cutler's Brigade to get him out of there. Yeah, plenty, plenty, plenty of fire on Cutler at this point. Just keep on taking uh, Osborne's battery out of the equation. Ah, we also have eyes on Stevens, the other half of Stevens. Got it. There we go. So we kicked him out of the woods, or at least that trench line. Uh, it will not, 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 not be enough for us to go on to the offensive yet. Um, not by a long shot, I don't think. But we can probably work on getting Stevens out of here. Whoa! Someone just showed up. The Granzers, oh, they're useful. Hey, guys. What's that line from... Die hard. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, we got Osborne. Yeah, that's fine. We've been blasting the crap out of his battery. All right, sweet. Okay, well, I will uh, take my earlier statement about not being able to go on the offensive and revise it. Uh, wow. So who was, who was the commander of the, the first... Uh, historically I want to say it was Heath does that sound right it was it was uh, Henry Heath I think it was his troops so it looks like third divisions almost entirely infantry which is interesting so I guess I only had the three nope there they are there's the rest of the guns who's charging I hear the sound of someone charging is it Ames no Krasinowski? Oh, it's... Really? They're charging... God dang it. The AI. Alright. Another Blake battery. Another James battery. We have... I can't click on the 10th yet. That's fine. 
plenty of experienced artillery. My lord, what could I have done if I had my full core here earlier, perhaps? This is an admonishment to me, the player, that I should have been a bit more conservative. Even more than I was already. Um, I suppose. But uh, at this point now, I'm feeling very good about things. So we'll get those troops into position. We'll get the rest of the artillery into position as well. Where's a good place for them to be? So we're going to get a bunch of artillery from... Icor coming from this direction. So my my short term um, instinct is to place this artillery here-ish and have it blast off the ridge. But I don't think I'm going to need it there. So, and I feel very confident now that this is Confederate territory. So let's go ahead and take our artillery and move it over there. Um, and we'll rotate foot troops uh, to that region as well as needed. Let's get Osborne out of here. It's just nonsense that they can charge like this and have any expectation of being able to make contact. Yeah, that's fine. Like, they should be exhausted by the time they even make contact. In fact, let's see if I can't get you. I mean, you're not going to get there in time regardless. Um, actually, you go there. You go there. Fall back. They're going to make contact regardless, but we'll hit them with three. Because... 40th is tired? Oh my word. He must have melee melee uh, perks. Drown them in bodies. Get out of here, Cutler. I'm tired of your crap. Jesus, we might need the third brigade to get in there too. Absolute wildness. Absolute crazy pants. All right, let's not lose sight of the uh, wider battle. That's the case. We advance. We advance. I don't understand that at all. Don't understand that at all. Absolute unmitigated nonsense. All right. Cool. So Cutler's just going to be doing that. That's fine, I guess. Cross the river. How do I want to do this? I think, well, so again, we're going to get i core troops coming from straight south. Not that attacking uh, directly is attractive. <sighs> yeah. So we come across there. And then those are the two repeater brigades. They're going to go come as well. Stevens is mostly gone, which is good. The artillery is mostly in position. I am completely shocked by this. I knew he was going to make contact. I just figured outnumbering him three to one would be enough. But, you know, melee perks, I guess. All right. 
Keep going, destroy that unit, don't give it a chance to rally. You guys can take a chance to rally, that's fine. But as uh, painful as that charge of Cutler's was, he is, at this point, so dramatically overextended that he's going to suffer some pretty crippling losses uh, extricating himself from that situation. I don't believe I'll be able to get all the way in there to make contact and try and surrender him or something, but um, he's certainly to the point of being nearly combat ineffective at this point. There we go. There's i -Core. Okay, so they're going to probably spend the rest of this episode marching, uh, I would imagine. Are they on the table? Yeah, they just appear. Okay, that's fine. Uh, i core. all the 1st Division is apparently infantry. That's fine. Let me see, form up uh, on this side of the river, and we'll start figuring out what to do with you once you get there. Is it all infantry? Oh, you know what I bet it is? It's just... The first thing that shows up is the infantry, probably. All right, that's fine. We'll deal with that when they get there. Alright then, um, let's put you there, let's pull you back to rest, you as well, and you as well, and uh, let's, you're fine there, you can be the reservist, we'll push you there. Just Blake's and James's, huh? Interesting. Alright. Anything else from my core show up yet? Oh, their supply wagon? Sure, that makes sense. It's actually going where I want it to anyway. Let them figure their lives out, what they're doing. Well, in macro sense, we've got Meredith's troops and whatever other uh, commanders were here. It looks like Howard Cutler. Um, whatever other commanders were present, we've got them all boxed in. All right, so now we use the Grand Battery and just start deleting shit. Be all like, the existence of this unit offends me, get gone. Yo dog, I heard you liked artillery. Get the fucking house, for Christ's sake. That's your LaHaye Saint, bro. Or no, that's your LaHugamont. Huge, I don't know how to say it, the huge amount. House cover, good, 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 good. All right, <laughs> it's, it's taken pretty much my entire core. Yeah, see, get gone. Nope, Cutler's still there. I don't care. Keep going. 
until he's gone. Considering how much he did to me, I want to wipe the entire unit. Are you shooting? You're right there. You don't need to move. You're fine. No one needs to move. You're all fine. A bug? What's going on? Well, they need to move, I guess. That's fine, I suppose. Let's shell the other cutler out. Oh, they're coming in from over here. Interesting. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Other troops. 40 minutes. It's about how long I've been recording. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I know I've got more than two cannons in uh, i -Core. All right. The grand battery's unloading in... Uh Cutler, though inefficient, I'm just wearing him down. Get the snipers in there too. The combined firepower of all that onto one single unit, and it will eventually break. All right, they're all still just getting into position. Get the hint, buddy. Then there's the other cutler up here I gotta worry about. Whoa, ho, ho, hold up. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's completely on me for just not noticing. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I am, of course, perfectly content to allow them to just sit there and drain off their health pool, but uh, I'm impressed. At this point, I will admit I feel fairly confident through sheer weight of numbers I could take the ridge. All right, you go there, 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 and you go there, and you two start unloading on Von Gilsa, I believe was the historical name. And then all of the artillery that can reach him, I guess, goes on to... Let's get Gilsa out of here altogether.
Okay. Take that hill or ridge, I mean, without a whole terribly lot of difficulty. Especially once a few more units start getting into position. with that. Probably won't take too long to get uh, a Cutler Indiana, the Indiana Cutler Brigade out of there. But let's get the Parrots and maybe the Wits on them. Yeah, they're going to have to move anyway. That's fine. And people should be moving up regardless. Great terrain for that kind of thing. Okay, and now it's ours. And at this point, really, everything north of the river is basically ours. Because it's just open fields. There's nothing really that's, like, defensible for them. Bloody, uh, though the effort has been, we have the high ground. Lee, historically, very much appreciated the import of securing this high ground early on. And if I'm not mistaken, I, th I think that's not how this went historically. Um, it's It's been long enough <laughs> since I've seen the movie Gettysburg or played Sid Meier's Gettysburg or just read about the flow of the battle on day one that I think they came damn close to, to getting this um, but weren't able to secure it properly early enough alright you guys can push you as well so now I'm advancing in triplets earlier in the battle I was maneuvering in doublets And in fact, now I'm maneuvering in doublets of triplets. Let's get you guys to go wide. i -Corps artillery train will take a minute to get into position, which is fine. Our troops have really excellent cover on elevated terrain, no less. Um...
And now it's on us to just chase, chase the enemy into, uh, into position. And then we've also now got guns on the ridge as well. Um, so things are looking pretty good uh, for the for the CSA. Um, so again, I think major shout out to um, all of the troops associated with Third Corps here. I think they have likely borne the brunt of what I would term the hard fighting uh, of the day. And ooh, the siege battery. In fact, let's keep all of our artillery on this side of the river. Because we're gonna be collapsing our lines inward, I think. So uh I mean they've suffered, right? They've taken losses. But I think uh ultimately the army is gonna benefit from it. And I, I it's hard to call it like their sacrifice. But um you know they, they fought fairly hard and they secured territory that's going to be vital to the confederate war effort on this particular battlefield i mean yeah the, the union's more or less just ceding entirely some of this terrain and i think we should uh, capitalize on that and see if we can't knock out some of these units get greedy start getting some real kills but i don't want to get too many and I reckon in three minutes in game, they're going to get reinforcements. We're closing on 45 to 48 minutes of the episode, depending on how much of the opener I cut out. Um, so we're probably not going to have Cemetery Hill. We are going to have Oak Ridge in time, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like, um, which is great. Um, it, it does mean, I think, that we'll transition into day two without without winning the battle. And it's it's... It's not even three o'clock in the afternoon, so there may be more fighting left in in day one. We'll find out, um, but we're certainly going to make you know Bill Yank pay for uh, I don't know the hard fighting that Third Corps went through, and apocryphally, you know, we're going to get them shoes, <laughs> which again isn't why they were actually here, but it's just a fun story. All right, Union withdraw Cemetery Hill. Is there more to day one fighting? My lord, there is. We must secure all ridges west of the town to consolidate our army in the vicinity of Gettysburg. We have done that. If we succeed in capturing also Cemetery Hill, we'll decisively conclude the battle. So again, I, I do not want to do that. I, I want to fight the two more hours, it looks like, uh, and go into tomorrow. And I think at this point I can probably just hold the hold the ground I've got and bombard uh, the Yankees into submission, probably. Uh, so we'll take this little triplet, a little conf group, push them wide, then into the mid. We'll have these guys in support and these guys also in support. Everything over here will go to this side of the river. See if we can't knock out Ames's brigade. I do not think. Well, hmm. Even if I do want to do it, I don't think I'm going to try and do it with Third Corps. They've borne enough fighting. We'll do it with I Corps. Um, we may be able to take right up to the edge of the town without killing everything else. Like I said, I do want to go to day three. I want to fight the whole thing. It is a fun battle. It's a great map. Um, but if I'm not careful, we can probably shoot them off this map entirely, and I don't think I want to do that either. Because I imagine if I do that, the game will say it's like we've captured... Cemetery Hill insofar as there is no one here to defend Cemetery Hill so therefore the Confederates could just claim it um, and if that be the case 
then the game would treat it like we'd captured the hill and decisively give us the battle, right? So I don't think we want to do that. I don't think that's how we want today to go. And if that's the case, the next part of this video might be fairly boring. Um, and so if that's the case, what I'll do is I'll just fast forward it, right? I'll just be like, hey, in the rest of day one, I sat in my lines, didn't advance and shot them with artillery until the clock ran down. I mean, that might be what happens. They are unlikely to be able to sortie beyond the town. I outnumber them four to one. I outgun them several times over. I don't, I can't do the, the division right now, but it looks like uh, eight, eight to one thereabouts. It's a, it's a, it's a big number, whatever number that is, it's big. So yeah, um, I want to injure the army, the Union Army, and actually I don't want to launch that attack. I don't want to initiate the attack with two star brigades. I want to send in the rookies. Same over here. Yeah, wow. This is a rough, uh, rough battlefield for the Union. When I, um, when I was playing uh, my Union Major General playthrough, I played this battle, and we held, the, the Union held here. And much like I'm doing to them now, they held troops here and just gunned, gunned, gunned into the town. Uh, they were never able to take the town itself, uh, but they, they did really put the hurt, the hurt onto uh, my troops in the villa, in the city. So I imagine I'll do the same thing here. Uh, but that will be um, in the next video. So that will be all for for this one. Uh, thank you, everyone, for sticking this out. Um, I've gotten some commentary that the live commentary is enjoyable uh, for these battles, even if it does look like it's going to break Gettysburg up into, like, nine snippets. Um, but it's also hopefully a little bit more uh, digestible. My worry with these two hour long, you know, episodes, it's, it's like I'm asking you to watch a movie of me playing Gettysburg. And um, with the caveat, I suppose, that some of those episodes end up being basically a podcast. Uh, and that's enjoyable in a non-Civil War context. That's enjoyable. So I suppose there's that. Um, where I, I, I would hazard a guess that my live gameplay is very focused on what's happening right in front of me. Um, so, yeah. All right. Um, for the remainder of the next two day, two hours in game, I, I can't imagine we'll go much later than five o'clock um, in game. Uh, I will bombard, but probably not attack the Union. I think I will not push into the town. I could take it, but I risk wiping out the map, and I don't actually want to do that. Hmm. You know, I think I could probably just do that in this episode. I think I could just click. Oh, oh, they get reinforcements. Oh, hey, folks, this might be more interesting. They get reinforcements, and if that's the case, things could change. They might go on the offensive again, although they're still at number two to one, so I don't know if it's really advisable. Let's see if we can't uh, get these supply wagons to... Yeah, here they come. Big brigades. Nope, doesn't look like it. Maybe... Maybe. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh, come on. Get out of there. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> How silly is it that this is the most exciting part of the battle so far? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. Just, just like, give him a little tippy tap. Just a little love tap on the back of the cart. Change the bumper sticker. There it is. All right. And now get that. <laughs>
hell out of Dodge. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. These are our supplies now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, goody. They are nice and full. All right, cool. That's very, very cool. All right, you go back to your parent unit, 29th Virginia Infantry. Um, the real winners of the opening phase of this battle. All right. Um, big brigades. Looks like they've been really unsuccessful in kind of going on any kind of offensive, which is not super de duper surprising. You know what? I feel pretty secure with our center. Let's go ahead and take our snipers and defend our flank. Um, and yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be hard pressed to go on any kind of attack. Okay, uh, where's my twenty pounders? Sure, you have to move. That's all right. You as well. Let's get you guys better into position because right now you're not doing anybody any good there. Where's a good spot for them? How's that sound? Sure. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the danger for them at this point, right? Is they're so heavily outgunned. Uh, I'm nearly certain you've got range from there. Uh, you've got to. Wow, really? Yeah, don't give me that crap. You've got range. Hmm. Okay, in fairness, it was just barely. That's actually surprising. I was expecting that to be a bit longer. All right, that's fine. We'll get this. There's just the one battery, right? Got 34 guns, and they had 11 earlier. 300 men. It's probably not just that one battery. Yeah, so like they're 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 never gonna be able to go anywhere because we've got so much gun power that they really can't leave the city. This is the same issue that I as a player actually ran into. Um that's interesting. Okay, well that battery's gonna retreat, that's cool. In that case we'll let them retreat, I suppose. They can go there. You can go there. Um, yeah, let's just run the clock down. I don't I don't want to go on the attack. Um, I want them to have some troops on day two and three. So we'll just kind of chill out, let our guns do their thing. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, so you get two different timestamps in today's video. Although one of them, I will admit, is very much not uh, not terribly interesting. That's okay, though, like I said. This is more about uh, getting us into day two and three. I don't feel a great deal of need to nuke these troops out of existence uh, right now. Wow. We worked through an entire supply wagon. That's crazy. But I have an hour. I can probably blast the ever-living shit out of Ruger, so we may as well, right? All right. Bye, buddy. It's been a good war for you, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just burn the hour. Burn the hour, milking some artillery kills, I guess. Um, with, there's almost no risk of me... Uh, what's we're looking for here? There's, there's almost no risk of me blasting these guys off the map, but there's also no reason to let them just hang out at 2,400 man strength. So we'll inflict what we can, and then you know we'll go from there. Siege isn't even online yet. We're just gonna, yeah, bombard the crap out of uh, poor Gettysburg over here. If you ever get the chance, and I mean, if you're watching this channel, I presume you are a Civil War buff, um, or at least a historical fan, or a fan of the game. Um, so whether or not your interest actually lies within the historical conflict or the gameplay or whatever, um, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania in the modern era has done a remarkable job of preserving the the battlefield now you know every year that kind of changes there's this inevitable march of development and technology and whatnot and people do want to build hotels and motel sixes and you know whatever else so i guess watch out for that kind of thing 
Um, but the park is beautiful. The tour is excellent. And um, the cool thing is the town itself is for the most part like done an okay job kind of pre pre like preserving its its appearance. It's still modern. Like it's still a modern town. There's cars and whatnot, but it's 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 it looks kind of clapboardy and, and of the era, so to speak. So it's very nifty in that regard. Um, so if you ever have a chance and you're, you know, kind of of that mindset to go on a, a battlefield tour or a store historical tour of that kind of nature, like do, do really try and make sure that you get uh, Gettysburg on your, on your short list. It really is one of the better um, preserved battlefields. I also thought Antietam was, was pretty good in that regard as well. So off to the next day. Okay, cool. I, I'm glad you glad that we got to knock out um, all of uh, day one in this video. I, I'm sorry that this last part wasn't super duper exciting, but I wasn't really interested in trying to, you know, brawl my way into the town and risk killing everything. I just didn't, I think probably wasn't going to happen, but I just didn't want to roll those dice. I really don't want to win this today. Um, what I do want to do, however, is top up uh, the supply wagon and then hire a new division commander for first division. Um, I'm not going to bump the units up. Although where's that one 20 pounder unit that's 199 men? There you go. That's going to annoy me. <laughs> so we'll fix them. We've got plenty of wet worse in stock, so I'm not that worried about them. Uh, and then second core hasn't even shown up yet. Uh, and this is Robert E. Lee's second core. So I'll show this off again really quick. We've got a lot of new units in second core, 45th, Texas, 46th, Alabama, 47th, South Carolina, et cetera, et cetera. These guys are huge, as you can see. Um, and the plan here is 2000 man, brand new units. We're going to bleed them down. So we're going to give them the minimum number of reinforcements to put them back at a round number because I will not bear. <laughs> looking at, you know, 1,289 or something like that. So it's got to be zero, zero on the end of it, but um, they'll get refilled otherwise. And then we'll just bleed them back down until 1,600 and we'll go from there. So 1,600 is the, the new gold standard for infantry. I'm trying to push scaling up a little bit, uh, make the battles a bit larger and more exciting. And then um, here's Fiasco's i -Core. Really barely any fighting, but some, not much, but some. Let's go ahead and play with them as well. They're mostly okay as far as the supply web is concerned. They're the guys I'm mostly worried about, and thanks to the fact that my perks, um, these guys are sort of grandfathered in. Back in the day, there wasn't a cap on the supply wagon, so you could just... Good lord, cat. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, you could just kind of do whatever you wanted, up to $100,000. And now, um, Third Corps was created after that big change in the patch. You'll notice that its supply limit is lower, and that's... Um, governed uh, by my army points, which I apparently can't select in between days. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and save. Um, let's call this uh, Rebel, so I know that. Gettysburg, day two, and we'll go from there. All right, lads, I will see you in the next one. This is Fiasco. I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days, and I'll see you on the field. Bye.